Hey everybody, thanks for sticking uh, with me throughout this series. This is the hopefully last video in the series where we're going to wrap up with Power Automate and showing you how to do this. So we're going to go over to My Flows. We're going to go to New Flow and Instant Cloud Flow. We're going to manually trigger this flow today. And we are in make.powerautomate, not make.powerapps. Or, yeah, make.powerapps is the, the maker that we just came out of. And make.powerautomate puts us in Power Automate, gives us access to the new designer, which is really cool. Um, otherwise, uh, you'll have to do things a little bit differently uh, if you're using the old school way of doing it. In any event, uh, one of the things we want to do is uh, add a new action. And under runtime, if we select custom, we can see our custom connectors that we have installed in the environment which is foo for me, so I'm in the foo environment, and here's my custom connectors that you've seen me do earlier. I'm gonna choose LM Studio, and we're gonna start off with chat. Now, let's show all, and this is the body. Now, the nice thing about Power Automate is, we don't have to do all of that parse JSON, JSON, garbly goo crap that we had to do before. This is fairly straightforward. So with the handy dandy uh, payload already created in our Postman, uh, which we covered in several videos back, you simply can just post in the payload to this and boom, you're gonna get a response. So now we got a, we're gonna get a response. Let's display that response out on the screen with a compose. So we'll choose Compose, we'll pick our Compose, and now here's where things get a little gnarly. And I, I'm, I'm gonna do something the wrong way to turn around to do it the right way. So most of you may be inclined to do the dynamic content. You'll say, oh, chat, let's see more. And you know that if I come down here to the response and the payload, I wanna get to this content underneath messages, blah, blah, blah. So in Power Automate, you may be, where is my edge? Okay. In Power Automate, you may be inclined to say, oh, uh, message content, that's exactly what I want. Oh, what happened? So I've got a for each, okay? And so this is fine. If you wanna do this, this is completely fine, but it will work. Let's save it, let's run it, and we should get a response. So test, manually, manually test, continue, run flow. And most of you are going to do this, but I personally hate doing things like this. Um, come on, run, hurry up, do your thing. And this is why I don't like doing it like this, because it takes twice as long. Okay, so I've got the compose, right? Here, I got the input, output. Anyway, they're pretty much the same here. It says, I'm an AI to say. Okay, it works. It's fine. And we know there's only ever going to be one response, so we don't have to deal with this, right? And so this is the easy approach. It's a little performant problematic in my opinion but you might not think that and that's fine if so just use it just like you saw me do it the other issue with this is there's a, a more direct way of dealing with this and let me get rid of this uh, I'll put the compose outside of here let's get rid of the delete and hit OK let's get into the compose object and this time let's build a function and this is the problem with doing it this way, is you have to know what you're doing. And most people get really, really nervous and scared. So just like we did in Power FX, we're gonna do the same thing. First, this is gonna avoid the for each, okay? So what do I wanna grab the first? I gotta give it a collection or a table. So I gotta go from this, you know, function thing into the switch over into the dynamic content, and I wanna go see more. What I want is the table. Now, if we remember from the JSON, if we look back, choices, its value is the table. So what I want is the body and the choices. Body forward slash choices is my table. So if I see if I can find body slash choices, oh, there it is right there. This is my table. And now all I need to do is add a couple of square brackets, put in my single quotes, and then I can drill down into message and content. So I'm gonna copy message here We'll put it up here, and we're gonna copy content. We'll grab it and put it there. Now, if you're advanced in Power Automate, you probably notice that between here, I didn't put a question mark, and between here, I didn't put a question mark. And it's a valid question, and the answer is A, I feel comfortable not using it, because as you know, 
the question mark basically says if it's not if the data doesn't exist it's going to throw an error if i don't use the question mark and the question mark simply says it's optional it's a best practice i don't disagree with that but because if i if I don't get this response back, period, I'm going to get an error message, I know for a fact anyway. I, I'm just making excuses for not taking the time to do the quote, uh, the question mark, simply because I didn't think it was necessary. But it is a best practice, and if you want to use it, please do so. And otherwise, if you don't, as long as the API gets a response, you should be good to go. And this is how you're going to avoid the for loop, and you'll see that the performance on this runs a lot quicker. So we got that and well, I might have just shot myself in the foot as far as being quicker because I don't think it was that much quicker to be honest with you. But it's a little bit cleaner. It's not nested in a for loop and it does make it easier downstream so that, for example, if I wanted to uh, you know, use another compose and say, for example, I wanted to grab the value out of the first compose, you know, I just take the outputs from the first compose and it's there because I'm not having to deal with the table. So either way, however you want to deal with it uh, is completely fine. But just know that this is how you can get the information out of here. So that being said, I'll leave this here because I know this is going to work. Let's do another one of these um, custom connectors because we have one more item, which is the models. This is going to give us a list uh, of the models. So essentially, it's going to return a table. and. And same thing as before, if we do compose two, except this time I'm okay with just saying, give me uh, the ID for the four each, and we'll hit test, and we'll hit manual. This is going to return us a table of values, because in this case, I do want all of the, the table values to come back. So we're doing a couple different things here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. All right, so here we got our table, and here is our output look right here, and I'm gonna cycle through. We'll go to the next, we'll go to the next, and we'll go to the next. And so here you see we've got all of those values. So very easy to consume in Power Automate, other than maybe a little bit of eh, this type of stuff that you saw when I did the PowerFX function, or not PowerFX, the uh, expressions in Power Automate. Uh, very similar to FX, you know, you use first or whatever. You could have also used indexing. Lots of different ways to do the same thing. But in, in any event, I just wanted to show you how to use Power Automate to use this type of stuff. Uh, mainly, you're probably going to use the chat for completions because this will allow you to potentially draft an email and you can pass in a bunch of dynamic content into your prompt, which is essentially what we were doing. Well, we weren't doing it here because we were simply just pasting, you know, putting in the body. But the point is I could have very easily uh, replaced this content with dynamic content, other places in the flow, and you kind of see where this is going. But all of this is somewhat unnecessary because you have AI Builder now. And AI Builder um, is, you know, part of this. One of the things you can do towards the bottom, for example, I can do AI Builder, and AI Builder allows me to do all of this kind of stuff that's built in. However, AI Builder is not cheap, um, and there's uh, there was additional licensing. They changed the licensing. Now you only get so many credits or whatever, but the point is, uh, if you want to use a generative AI that's free and private, uh, because again, this is installed on the, on the machine, so anything I pass into it, it's on this machine. I'm not doing anything with it. The folks at LM Studio aren't doing anything with it, and so it's way more secure than sending it out to, say, Microsoft, who then has an instance of OpenAI running in whatever. Not to say that that's not secure, because it's probably way more secure than what you're going to get with OpenAI directly. Um, as you've seen, they've changed their mindset and waffling back and forth between being open sourced, uh, free, and then they tried to go to a for, uh, you know, a, be a profitable company. So I don't know. I don't know that I would trust them as far as you can throw them. But nonetheless, um, on a soapbox, doing a ramp. That's it for this series, guys. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please comment, subscribe, do all the wonderful stuff that you're supposed to do on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>